Well, guys, that is the end of my walkthrough. I really hope you enjoyed. I did every uh, single part. I uh, did a little bit of uh, achievement grinding or whatever on the side, you know, just to show, you, show off or show off what you can do. And uh, that was pretty good. Um, so I'm not, as I said, I'm not doing any kind of achievement guides or anything. I kind of did a little bit when I could because it is brutal after all. I do some of the things you can't do on, on Brutal, but generally all the achievements are either normal or hard, so, uh, you know, you just, the, the best way is to, like, intensely focus on one of them. Like, if you don't want to do, if you don't want to use any uh, of the, uh, the little, the artifacts, like, attack thing, um, then you're, you're better off than playing on hard, which is, I think, the minimum difficulty required for that, and then just concentrating really hard on, on just doing that and like having a good defense, picking the best level for it, you know, things like that and you shouldn't have any trouble with uh, things like that um, I want to hear from you guys what you think of uh, this kind of walkthrough style I kind of did, which is basically I normally don't do this, but I, I played it beforehand and to make it so I can have like the best uh, well, I played the mission I played the mission once myself maybe failed a couple of times and then I kind of goes, okay, I devised the best strategy, and then I kind of went out and, and did like a tutorial kind of thing. So you guys tell me what you think about that. Um, I'm thinking for, uh, I'm definitely doing Heart of the Swarm, and uh, as far as tutorials go, um, I think I'm going to do blind, a blind run of it, which I'm going to upload on hard, and then afterwards I'll do a brutal walkthrough, which I'll do very kind of like, uh, like, like a little bit after, maybe like a good... Maybe maybe during. I don't really care. Uh, it depends. It depends. Uh, it depends when I want to finish on brutal. But uh, that's that's basically my plan for that, uh, and I'm going to show that off as well when whenever Heart of the Swarm comes out. So you'll see that. So tell me what you think about you know kind of like the walkthrough, more informative style I was kind of going for here, rather than uh, I kind of forgot the missions and what kind of pops out at me. Although that did happen on a couple occasions, like that, like especially at the end of the. Uh, Nidus, the Nidus All In uh, mission, where I had no idea that they spawned at the top there, and uh, I died, as I said, on 99.9%. On .9%, and uh, I had no idea what did it because the screen all grayed out, and I'm like, eh, I'll do it. Like, I'll be able to do it in the video. It's 99.9 .9 is good enough. I, I just thought the number was funny. You know, I, I was that close to, to beating the game, and uh, <laughs> it just came 0.1% uh, up short. So yeah, tell me what you guys think of the walkthrough style. Uh, I probably will only do it for something like StarCraft. It doesn't need to happen for for shooters, obviously. Games like that. It's it's mostly, yeah, it's mostly an RTS StarCraft thing. Uh, well, if... I guess I'll go on to say what I think about the game. Um, StarCraft 2 is a good game. Uh, definitely buy it. It is worth buying. Uh, in comparison with StarCraft and like the all like whatever other Blizzard games you can think of, uh, it's a little bit worse than what I expected to get. Uh, to be honest, it may be improved because most of the, the biggest problems for me can be still fixed. They just haven't been fixed. Um, but I'll go like just you know review everything independently. The campaign, story-wise, really is terrible. The voices are really terrible. Uh, they're like very kind of mediocre, uh, not what I expected from a Blizzard game at all, especially the unit voices. Um, unit voices tend to be very defined for me, like uh, I can basically recite like most of the StarCraft 1 units because they had a very kind of like, uh, it's it's hard to explain, Like, and that's obviously why they had so much, so much difficulty capturing what, what made the, the units so unique in that game. It's just like the, the accents, the voices, their sayings, all that stuff were very, I felt, unique and very defined. I can't even tell you how most of the Zerg sound. I can tell you how they sounded in StarCraft uh, 1. I can't tell you what they, how, what they sound like here, because they, they sort of sound like StarCraft 1, but they don't at the same time. They It's kind of like a big mix of like uh, like like growling noises. It's, it's really weird. Obviously not very good sound jobs done here. Um, the music for the Terran was uh, was well, really well done. That was that was really good. Uh, but the, most of the most of the dialogue and plot were very dumbed down, simple. Like I felt was like uh, maybe it's your own fear that you're smelling. Like what the hell is that? <laughs> it's probably one of the worst lines in the game. I think. I uh, just didn't even make any sense. Um, 
so I didn't like that too much. Uh, however, the good uh, is that the campaign missions themselves are actually much better than StarCraft 1. Because in StarCraft 1, most of the time what you'd be doing is uh, you'd be just destroying all enemy buildings, destroying a bunch of... Uh, destroying entire product space. And so once you have a force to win, it was basically like 5-10 minutes of you just killing everything. Um, and I also do like the fact that they don't they don't have that option of going for like battle battle cruiser like coring like you don't do you don't get battle cruisers until the very end and in a lot of missions they aren't actually that useful anyways uh, just like that that one mission you get them and then the one mission where you're in space and in the air that's it there's just two missions and I upgraded them for some reason and it was a really stupid idea but that's how I roll I guess um, difficulty difficulty is great uh, I really like the challenge it is still uh, relatively challenging on some of the missions. Uh, the style of the upgrades and the unit upgrades and stuff was also fantastic. Some of them were pointless. Some of the units are completely useless to begin with. Reapers. Poor Reapers. They're probably going to get cut from the next game. I think they were saying that. Uh, so, poor, poor Reapers are gone now. Um, didn't like the Protoss missions, because uh, they had nothing to do with the upgrades, and they weren't actually unique. Anyway, they were just trying to push some story with the Zelnaga, which feels a lot like Warcraft 3, but as I said, the story I hated, but the campaigns, the campaign I liked. It's kind of it's kind of sad, though, about the, the storyline, because the story was actually really good in the first one. That's what kind of kept it going. And I just saw your mom in the, the thanks thing. Here, that's scrolling. Anyways, um, but yeah, the campaign missions are fantastic. Melee, uh, going into more of the multiplayer things, Melee, uh... I don't really play melee. Um, for those who play it, some people some people say it's really good. Uh, some people hate it. Uh, pff, I don't really know. I've never. I'm not much of a melee player. I don't really like one v oneing people. Um, I'm competent at the game at the very me at least. Oh, what, why is Fraps on here? I don't even know. Okay, whatever. Yeah, special thanks to Fraps. I'm using it to record right now. Um, sorry, back on subject. Uh, melee is good uh, if you like if you like that one v one RTS kind of stuff. And it's it's actually pretty well balanced. Uh, there's no uh, there's no smurfing. They've really fixed that, which is basically really good players making new accounts to basically be lower ranked and kill bad players, kind of a thing. Which is something which was common in the other games. Okay, I'm not sure why I, I heard that noise, but whatever. Uh, so melee is good. Uh, Co-op versus AI. Um, I play that occasionally with, with friends. I like that. That's fun. Um, by the way, I have 98% achievements. I'll just show you right now. Uh, I have no idea where my achievements are. I guess I just open up my profile. So yeah, I've already done all the missions on Brutal. This is this is previous to that. And uh, if we go to um, achievements, the ones I actually haven't gotten are... Um, I'll maybe get them and then show you 100%, I guess, so you can see a nice pretty number. They're right here. And basically it's just telling me I haven't done Lost Viking. I actually haven't beaten that, and I plan to make another video uh, complimenting this one just to show you uh, me, I guess, getting really far in Lost Viking or something. Well, that may take a while, I'm not sure. And there's also this uh, 8 hours total play mission time on normal difficulty, which I don't know, I haven't had time to do, I guess. Or maybe I haven't done it yet. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to give that a try uh, as well. Uh, that one seems, seems kind of fun to do, just you know, speed run the entire game. Anyways, uh, back on uh, the main reason uh, I bought this game was mostly for the customs. The customs were, was the best part. Um, I've also made uh, a, just a handful of maps because I do I liked making maps in StarCraft One. I don't like it as much in StarCraft Two, mostly because um, things are overcomplicated now. Um, I don't know why it's 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 the actor system, the the behavior system, all this stuff. It's just nothing really works the way it wants wants you to want, w the way you want it to. And there's a whole bunch of terms and definitions of things which I don't quite know how they work. And th things as simple as making a missile, who do, which just goes to a point and destroys itself in the data editor, is a total pain in the ass. I've I've begun to realize, and so I kind of gave up on it to be honest. But I did make. Uh, uh, you got if you've played StarCraft online uh, on the on the maps, you have seen uh, one variation of uh, uh, Starship Troopers Elite. Uh, some of that Special Forces Elite, which is um, a lot of maps are now based upon that, uh, and it's my doing. 
Uh, but and and I really like them too. Uh, it, it was a, it was a fun map to make, but I stopped right after that because I was trying to do a, a, another uh, bigger, more ambitious project. But I just gave up on that because the, the editor was. I don't know. It was. It wasn't really that fun. I, I have. I usually have fun making StarCraft maps, but not in this case because I. I was stuck on like the same thing over and over again, trying to get something to work, and I just gave up because I was just like, you know what? I'm not really having fun. Why do I mess around with it when I don't have fun? You know, it's. I'm not, it's like I'm not. I'm not getting money or anything or fame or something. It's just I'm making a map. I, I do it for fun, and I wasn't having fun. So, that's basically it with that. Um, and the last problem with the game, this is the biggest problem. It's been like this since the since the release. Hey, look, see the Special Forces Elite map, some shared income one, made by. Oh uh, yeah, this one, Lanzarote or whatever. Uh, and so uh, my main problem with this right now is uh, I wonder if this is another variation. Nobody ever changes my picture. Oh no, this is not mine. Okay, well I only have one of mine. Well, it's not really mine, but it's an edit of mine. I don't, I don't really. I just say that for some reason because it makes me feel special, I guess, that someone used my work. I don't know why more people don't open their maps. It's just kind of cool, just to give someone a, just you know, it's like I started you off, you know, don't waste time, go go improve it. Anyways, uh, I was gonna just talk about the customs really quick. Uh, they blow, um, not because the maps suck. Uh, sometimes the maps suck. Uh, you know, Star Battle's okay. It's just that I don't want to play these two pages of maps over and over again. When I when you get into like here, like like and probably by the third page just nothing's gonna be filled. Like here, let's see space zombies. Maybe I'm gonna prove myself wrong. Uh nobody's making a lobby. And this is the problem. It's basically the popularity system which sucks, because, you know Basically, uh the popularity system ensures that only the first two pages of maps, so that's about, I don't know, like twenty maps, twenty five maps, something like that. Only these get filled up. And so you can see all the hours played. And when you go into here, it's like it says like eight, 64 hours played. Like obviously some, mostly it's people in parties who fill these games up. Uh, but as soon as you get into the third page, it's like yeah, nobody's playing these. That's it. Nobody's playing them. Um, and it's also uh, because of the fact that something is on the popularity system. Uh, something's at the top, and maybe everybody's sick of it, but the th reason it stays at the top is because, you know, people are playing the lay, and then they're curious about a new map they see, and even if it's completely buggy as hell, and completely sucks, it doesn't matter, it will stay at the top, because guess what, you just played it again. And the, uh, and the hours don't apparently count for anything, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but basically, there is a very low, uh, variety of games to play. Like, I used to, when I was, um, like 10 or whatever, I used to play StarCraft and played the customs. Uh, for the moment I go home from school until like dinner time, that was like like two, three hours. And I had no trouble with that. I have not touched this in years. Uh, not years, no, I had months. Uh, I, occasionally I occasionally go on when I have like uh, people from the community in the, in the Mike Platforms community to basically come on with me and then we all make a party and we go, okay, let's go try something on the fifth page here. What's Test and Zerg? Let's go see. You know, it's like weird stuff like that. And some of these are actually pretty good. But it, it stays at like 34 hours played. Like these these poor souls, they're, they're spending all these times on these maps, but they're not getting anything. Apparently they're going to fix that for Heart of the Swarm. They're saying that they're, making, they're redoing the system. And it's... I don't even know why they're taking so long, because it's just a matter of make it so if someone is trying to make a lobby right now, like if, if, if I go into, let's say, whatever the hell this is, if I press that... Uh, what should happen is that it, there should be a list, a listing like right here, and it should be, uh, I don't know, like, um, this is the idea I had, and obviously, like, they're not doing it, so, well, I didn't really tell them, but I'm just saying, like, this seems like, it just seems like a no-brainer, like, it's, you just have, um, uh, like, recent lobbies or something as a, as a thing, and then just have, uh, like, the ones at the top are the oldest lobbies that are, that are currently being made or something, or maybe not like that, maybe the ones at the top are the... I don't know exactly how it works, but it's somewhat, somewhat like StarCraft 1, uh, where you just get a list of maps that people like are trying to make lobbies for, and, and it, it scrolls through, which is really nice. Like You get to see what people are trying to play, so you can go join them, and that's what would fix it. Uh, and so you, it gets lets you try new maps. You can also try the fun or not system, where you can integrate this by basically saying, if you say, no, it's not fun, then... Uh, if you, if you uh, mark a map as not fun... By the way, I have no idea when this is, like, actually, like, the fun or not 
system comes in. I, it's, I think it's on the score screen. It's not nearly big enough. Anyways, if you say not big, if you say it's not fun, then it should not show it in the in, in this list. Like we'll have a checkbox that's che checked by default, and it goes like filter not fun out, you know, kind of thing. And then you get only the maps you either haven't tried or you thought were fun, and maybe like make make the ones you thought were fun green or something. See, I, like that's great ideas right there. Like I'm. Why? Why are they doing this? I don't know. Um, anyways, in, in other regards, uh, Bina 2.0, I don't think is that bad. Uh, although I do miss LAN because LAN has screwed up a lot of tournament tournaments. Uh, I do, I do w like watch a little bit of competitive StarCraft. I don't know why they haven't put in LAN yet. Like, I, I guess they really want to push this. Like, all you have to do is you don't even have to remove Battle.net 2 from the equation. You just have to go, well, if two people are playing together who are just, you know, on the same network, well, maybe we should try and put them in a LAN game instead of having it go to the Battle.net servers. But I'm guessing what they're worried about is someone's going to find out how to reverse engineer that, and then you basically have a, uh, you know, like a iCup, uh, other Battle.net kind of thing that people will go on. And, and they don't have to buy the game anymore. It's 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 completely 100% piracy. That's what they hate about it, because like there's there is there are games that have been made with basically land detection whenever you join from an internet game. So I don't know. Anyways, I think I'm done. Uh, overall, as I said, it's a great game. Uh, do get it. Uh, campaign always always worth coming back to. My, I think my only other gripe is that they did split it into three games, which was um, a little weird. Uh, it's it's not bad, like it's it's okay, but um, you know, uh, it, I I just feel like you know I I I do like the Terran, but I feel like when we get the Zerg one, I might get sick of Zerg after a while, or maybe the Protoss one, I'll get sick of Protoss, or maybe the Terran, I get sick of Terran kind of thing. It's not the kind of kind of thing which I can play like. Each episode, because they're gonna be there's gonna be a noticeable difference in the quality as well, because they're gonna constantly evolve it. So then I think at the end it's gonna be like the Terran campaign is technically gonna be the worst one out of the three, and nobody's gonna want to play it. So it's like you know they're just different, and it's kind of weird. It's but it doesn't really work that way, I guess, for Brood War, because then you know people like both campaigns as well. I don't know. You know what? I, I just mostly I don't like the fact that I'm uh, waiting so long to play the other campaigns for the other races. Uh, mostly because I like the missions. Um, I'm not really, as I said, I'm not into the story anymore. Um, apparently, they were uh, they they were planning on something where the Zerg are, uh, are then free. I, I saw the apparent leaked uh, cut final cutscene for for uh, uh, Heart of the Swarm, and it looked really lame. It looked like they were just sell setting it up uh, for uh, um, an MMO, where basically you can play as a Hydralisk because they're free and they don't have to listen to the hive mind or some crap like that. I don't know, Zerg being free is, is not, not what I had in mind. Their, their brains are too small. They're supposed to be... They're supposed to be dominated by overlords and crap and overmines and kerrigans and whatever. It's not the Zerg I know. Yeah, I just hope they don't pussify them. Or else I'm, I swear I'm gonna just... I'm gonna rage quit the campaign. Well, I'll be done it by then, but you know, whatever. Anyways, I, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll have some Lost Viking up. Uh, maybe after this, I don't know. I'll see... I'll see when I am able to not suck at it and beat it. So you guys all have a good one. Have a I hope you enjoyed and leave your comments and whatever and feed my cat. Bye.